Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano and on today's program we will get an update from Save the Harbor, Save the Bay, all about their summer beach programs this year. First though, we check news for you. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch is pushing ahead with plans to develop a new building for Quincy College. During his State of the City address outside City Hall back on Tuesday, the mayor announced the creation of the Quincy College Building Committee. Uh, Koch will ask the City Council this coming Monday night to approve $23 million to begin the process of creating a new home for the college. The mayor also revealed that he'll use $430,000 in community development block grant funds to provide 120 low-income residents who've lost their jobs due to the pandemic tuition-free certificate-level programs at Quincy College. The mayor said the city will work with the college to increase enrollment and encourage more Quincy Public School students to further their education at Quincy College. But as we've talked about, the college also needs a physical foundation of bricks and mortar. Our work to build the school, its first permanent home, will continue to move forward this year. And I'm pleased to announce today that I'm naming College Governor Catherine Craven to lead the new Quincy College Building Committee that will shepherd this vital project from beginning to end. There is no single person in our entire Commonwealth who has more experience in leading the construction of new school buildings than Mr. Craven. Currently the Chief Administrative Officer of Babson University. She previously served as the Executive Director of the University of Massachusetts Building Authority, where she oversaw nearly $4 billion in capital improvements that transformed the campuses of the UMass system. And prior to that, she was Executive Director of the Mass School Building Authority. During her time in partnership with communities across the state, she led an $11 billion renaissance of school construction. We look no further than the block down on Coddington Street to see the new Quincy High School and several blocks north to see Central Middle School to see the product of her work under the leadership, of course, of her then boss, State Treasurer Tim Cahill. Governor Craven is with us here today. Look forward to our work ahead in providing the college with a state-of-the-art educational facility of its own for the very first time. Thank you, Catherine, for taking on this responsibility. A major improvement project will be getting underway along Marymount Parkway in Quincy this spring. Mayor Thomas Koch has announced a plan to put the utility lines underground, install some historical looking lighting, replace the sidewalks, and add new plantings between Hancock Street and Furnaceburg Parkway. Future improvements will include a new bridge over Black's Creek, new footbridges through Marymount Park, and a new footbridge to Pine Island from the Ryan Boathouse. The improvements were spelled out in a 2009 Marymount Park master plan. Koch says eventually major improvements will be needed all along the Southern Artery. Well, Congressman Stephen Lynch was in Quincy this week to check on the COVID-19 vaccination and testing clinic that's being run by Manit Community Health Center. Lynch visited the center at 180 Old Colony Avenue behind the Central Middle School. That's where Manit's administering vaccines and also conducting COVID testing. Manit is administering more than 1,000 vaccinations per week using the Moderna vaccine. Lynch was joined by Mayor Thomas Koch, Norfolk County District Attorney Mike Morrissey, and Norfolk County Sheriff Pat McDermott. During his State of the City address earlier this week, the mayor did praise Manit's management staff and volunteers for their work throughout the pandemic. A homeless man from Quincy has been charged with breaking into a construction vehicle parked at a Quincy playground recently. Police say 30-year-old Alexander France broke into a bobcat that was parked at the Collins rest wild playground on Marymount Parkway. Officers on patrol spotted a flashlight inside the vehicle when they arrested France. He claimed he worked for the company that owned the bobcat. But the C. Naughton Construction Company said France was not an employee. He now faces breaking and entering charges in Quincy District Courts. 
Well, the state fire marshal's office is reminding everyone to change the batteries in their smoke and carbon monoxide detectors when we spring ahead for daylight saving time this weekend. Safety experts say that there's only a three minute window of escape in a house fire. Here in Quincy, senior citizens can contact the fire department about testing, maintaining, or replacing their smoke alarms. Officials say alarms should be replaced every 10 years. Coming up, Save the Harbor, Save the Bay representatives will chat about this year's Shamrock Splash fundraiser and more. That's next. The COVID-19 vaccines can be our chance to get back to our plans, who we are, what we miss, to get back to each other, to life. But it's okay to have questions, like how were the vaccines tested? In rigorous clinical trials among adults of diverse backgrounds, can the vaccines give you COVID-19? You cannot get COVID-19 from a vaccine. Why should I get vaccinated? Protecting yourself also helps protect the people around you. Find the latest information at GetVaccineAnswers.org. Didn't it come from you guys? Strangers cough at me. Move away from me. Someone spit towards my direction. All the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just gonna be reversed. And I won't let that happen. We all have to play our part. I donate my plasma. I've been making masks. We deserve respect as much as everybody else. I'm a firefighter, not a virus. I'm a mask maker, not a virus. I'm a nurse. I'm a delivery woman, chef, a neighbor, artist, bus driver. I'm a doctor. Fight the virus, fight the virus. So today in the program, we check in with the folks from Save the Harbor, Save the Bay, because it's time for the annual Shamrock Splash. And they're not going to let anything like a, a little pandemic uh, get in the way of raising money for programs uh, on uh, beaches from uh, Nahant to Nantasket. So we want to welcome the executive director, Chris Mancini. Also, Kristen Barry is here and uh, Maya Smith. So hello, everybody. Hey, Joe. Hi. Hi, Quincy. <laughs> Good to see you all. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Sure. Uh, Chris, maybe we should start with you as, uh, as the executive director and tell us, uh, for folks who don't know, a little bit about uh, Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. Sure. So, yeah, Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. Uh, we've were, been around since uh, 1986 and uh, founded to uh, restore and protect Boston Harbor and Massachusetts Bay, um, and then to share these spectacular urban natural resources with, with everyone uh, across uh, the city of Boston, uh, from the Hunt and Antasket, all around the region. Um, and it's just, you know, many people know the story now, but it's one of like the truly great environmental success stories. Um, we had a harbor that was you know, basically a sewer, and now we have some of the cleanest urban beaches in the country, including down in Quincy, um, in Dorchester, in South Boston. Um, and we just want to see these, uh, these these great resources getting getting used and getting um, open to, to everybody. And that's really what the Shamrock Splash, um, the Harkwood Shamrock Splash is all about, is raising funds uh, for the Better Beaches program in partnership with the DCR. And we, we give out all that money to friends groups, uh, community organizations, youth serving organizations to do free programs, activities, um, and events. And uh, usually you see us, uh, you see everybody out there, um, you know, in, in the middle of the summer, you know, with kids day and in, in down on Wollaston. Um, but, uh, you know, we've, we've pivoted a little bit, but we, we feel good that we'll be, we'll be getting back to stuff like that eventually. Well, it's, you know, it's become blatantly obvious uh, during this pandemic that, uh, outdoor activities, outdoor recreation, you know, just being outside is so important. And we're so fortunate um, here in Quincy and, and up and down the 
the coast to have the resources uh, of the beaches. Have you have you heard uh, stories of folks you know utilizing more maybe in the past year than they have in years past? Absolutely. In fact, that's almost the, the exactly what you said. The, the outdoors is such um, a, a great option and, and really one of the few options that um, the DCR actually has reported higher use on like a winter weekday than they would get in, in some typical summer weekends um, on, on the beaches. Um, because this is this is where where we can go. You, know, you can get outdoors, and and almost you know last year our priority really became making sure to help communicate. Uh, you know, make sure to keep using being safe and responsible when you're out there. Um, we, we didn't want to see, and we didn't see, um, thanks to everybody's um, kind of responsible use, what happened in places like Florida and California, where beaches were getting shut down um, because of, of overcrowding. So it worked really well. The communication worked. People were uh, responsible, but still you know, kind of rediscovering in some cases, um, these, these great, these great places. Yeah. How has, uh, Save the Harbor, Save the Bay fared, uh, you know, financially during this time? Have you ever seen a, a hit at all or has it been pretty steady? Yeah, I think like a, a lot of folks, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a cliche at this point, but it's true. You know, it's been a challenging year for everyone. And, uh, you know, we have a pretty wide, um, ranging a group of, of supporters and partners and, and people, um, you know, have been affected in, in all different ways. So while it has been um, a challenge, you know, we, we think we planned uh, really well um, and modified our, our programs and our, and our uh, you know, expectations. Um, you know, for example, we didn't, we didn't do, you know, full in-person programming last year. Um, so we, we were able to pull our expenses back, but, you know, Kristen and Maya, um, and I'll let them talk about it because they know it much better, you know, it created and with the, with the youth staff, an incredible virtual um, program that led to a, a fantastic summer for the 30 um, high school and college students who, who come work for us and, and lead these programs typically. Yeah, we should maybe bring Maya in at this point, uh, the community engagement manager, Maya, for Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. So, uh, how did you, you know, reach out to the community during a pandemic and say, hey, you know, it's it's safe, uh, come on out and, uh, and see what we have to offer? Yeah, so we decided to make sure that we were still providing the free public programming that we always do, just on a much safer and scaled down version. Um, so as Chris said before, we still were able to offer employment to 35 young people throughout our community this summer. Um, and through our youth program, we were able to still provide um, some education that brings people and connects people to the harbor in a safer way. So this year we started virtual Boston Harbor and our teens, uh, high school and college age young people were creating all different types of content that would be sent out to our community so that they can from their home still be engaged with the harbor. So we have videos, curriculum plans, scavenger hunts, anything you can think of that people can do at home that still connects them to the harbor. So that's all on our website, savetheharbor.org. Um, and through our Better Beaches grant program, which we'll talk a little bit more about um, which all of the money from the splash goes to the Better Beaches Grant Program, we were still able to do a lot of really cool things and engage the community. Um, in particular, we had a Beats on the Beach contest that actually was started in Quincy and based at Wollaston, um, where they took samples from sounds at the beach in Wollaston and made those into beats. Um, and we had a whole cool hip hop based competition um, that we started in Quincy this summer. So through Better Beaches and through our youth program, we were able to do content that connects people to the harbor and really cool programming that finds safe, unique ways to bring the harbor to home. So. How do young people connect with Save the Harbor, Save the Bay, you know, to get involved in that program? How do you reach out to them? How do they get in touch with you? How does that work and who, who can? I don't, Kristen, do you want to, or do you want me to, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I got it. So, so for our youth employment program, um, we hire a lot of people through some other partnerships that we have. Um, SuccessLink through the city of Boston's youth uh, engagement and employment office has been an incredible resource to us, as well as the John Hancock MLK program and a few other great community programs um, are assisting us in making sure that we can hire um, young people. So we typically have high, high school aged youth that are 
14 to like 18 um, that work with us during the summer. And our application is out there. It's on our website, savetheharbor.org. If you know a young person who loves being outside, loves to fish and wants to come hang out in a COVID safe work environment this summer, um, we are making sure to reach out to people through our partner organizations, um, through great opportunities like this, um, and making sure that we're in contact with all of the high schools and organizations that work with young people. Kristen, we should bring you in as the program uh, director and talk a little bit about, uh, about maybe how uh, something that starts with Save the Harbor, Save the Bay could lead to something you know bigger, perhaps a career perhaps. Yeah, um, so a huge part of our uh, youth employment program is leadership development and connecting the young people that we work with with um, community leaders and, you know, whatever that we, we do, um, individual meetings with each of our staffers and really try to figure out what they're interested in. And if they have no idea, like just throwing out a bunch of stuff and, and it's like a collaborative uh, conversation that really starts to identify, um, you know, even the, the youth as young as uh, like freshmen and, and sophomores in high school, um, like potential career paths and uh, people to talk to and do informational interviews and, um, we uh, piloted our um, virtual, so I guess, I guess we had a speaker series in the past that we did our virtual speaker series this summer, um, and that really focused on um, bringing in people that grew up in Boston and uh, are Boston area professionals uh, with a focus on um, queer and BIPOC um, people from the community, and really just sort of getting these people to talk to our young people and, and talk more about like how they got to where they were and their experience, like going to BPS and, and stuff like that. And so just connecting um, the kids that, that work for us with really any of the, the resources that um, we connect through our uh, speaker series. And then also really just, you know, identifying people from the board that they can talk to and email and reach out to and, and just learn as much as they can uh, about, about their interests. So, yeah. So, Chris, uh, the Shamrock Splash, uh, the obvious uh, connection is with uh, St. Patrick's Day. I know uh, years ago it was the Cupid Splash around, say, Valentine's Day, but it got a little bit too chilly at that point. <laughs> so we pushed it ahead a little bit. Um, it's different this year. Obviously, it's virtual. How is it all working? Um, you know, my and Kristen have put together a really great, uh, just like they did with the with the program. You know, they they pivoted and started the first virtual, hopefully only virtual Shamrocks Harpoon Shamrock Splash. And um, you know, in fact, we're, we're seeing um, we had hope for this. We're seeing more engagement. Really, you know, the, you take out the the maybe a perceived barrier of having to show up on a specific day and do this and, and really open it up to the wider community. And we've seen, you know, a lot more participation, you know, fundraising is up and it's not too late. You know, you can still sign up. There's a bunch of great incentives. Maya's wearing the, uh, the, her, the splash ambassador, or the splashator. I keep trying to make it a word. <laughs> it's a word. Um, sweatshirt. Um, and you know, it's running through, through this weekend. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's been really fun to watch what people come up with. And, and, uh, and like Maya said, all that money goes into the Better Beaches Grants Program. And, and you know, that's funded um, in the past, you know, Friends of Wallaston Beach, the Kids Day, Discover Quincy, um, Department of Natural Resources. We run a program down at Black's Creek uh, for, for many years as well. Um, and you know, over over the last decade or so, I think you know we've invested you know over a quarter million dollars in in Quincy specifically um, for all of this great stuff. That really you know it activates these spaces. It gets um, it gets music and it gets circus performances, um, games. You know, it's it's great to have a clean beach, and we think it's even greater to have you know some exciting stuff to do there. You know, the reading days and, and all of that. So um, you know, we're looking forward to what people come up with. For this, you know, hopefully this final transition year out of the out of the pandemic. We're hoping, you know, by 2022, we're, we're back to something close to to being back together on the beaches and, and really knowing how to do that. And so, but I think there's a lot of opportunity as our amazing staff and our amazing partners have shown over this past year. They pivot, they adapt, they keep people involved with the beaches um, while you know investing some of that money in um, PPE, you know, protecting uh, you know hand sanitizer and masks that. that they still, still says, you know, welcome to the beach, come on down. Um, but, you know, here's, here's how you can do it safely. 
Do you have a, a goal for the splash this year? Um, and, and if you could talk a little bit about how that uh, money is distributed. Yeah, the goal is fifty thousand um, dollars, and and we're we're right on track to to reach that goal. And I'm I'm secretly hoping it's not a secret anymore because I'm saying it on TV. But uh, you know we're going to get up to sixty thousand dollars this year. You know we're really seeing a really nice, really nice um, uh, momentum, I think. And uh, you know Maya, I think can talk a little bit about you know we're about to put out a, an RFP, a request for proposals um, for for projects, so you can access those funds. Sure, yeah. go ahead, Maya. Yeah. Yeah, so we are super excited. Um, of Everyone loves the splash, but my personal favorite part is being able to give this money out. Um, this is money that we're raising to give away. So everyone likes the people who come by with money to give away. So it's great being able to be those people. So the request for proposals will be coming out in early April. Um, that will be out on our website. We'll be putting it out on social media. Um, and we're going to be reaching out directly to a lot of local organizations and artists. Um, with the money that we raised this year, we are focused on making sure that we're investing in and amplifying the voices of people of color. Um, throughout our nine communities. Um, so we are going to be doing some really cool things with artists this summer. Um, we have the Beats on the Beach competition coming up again this year. Um, and then we also are planning on doing um, an artist showcase. So we're going to be looking for all of the incredibly talented people of Quincy to reach out to us because we would love to pay people to perform um, so that we could record it and put it out virtually for people to enjoy at home. Um, we are going to be looking for artists, uh, visual and performing. We're going to be looking for organizations. Um, so basically the process of that is once the request for proposals is out there, we're just looking for people to reach out and have a conversation. Um, and we're looking for opportunities to support the great work that we already know is happening in Quincy and all of our neighborhoods. Um, there are so many incredible and super committed people in our communities who are doing great work. So why not reach out to us and have some funding behind it, you know? <laughs> great. Yeah. And that the pandemic certainly has uh, greatly impacted the entire arts uh, community severely for sure. Yeah. Um, so it's a great uh, a showcase, you know, for them. When do the, when do the grants uh, get presented? Yeah. So we normally give the grants out um, in May so that we can start getting ready for the summer and getting everything planned um, and Save the Harbor, of course, is ready to be there and support and all of the things that get put on. Um, so all of those grants should be going out around May. You know, I'm, I'm struck by the fact that all, all three of you are, are, are pretty young. Did you come up through the youth program, any one of you or all three of you perhaps? <laughs> Yeah, that's me. Um, so I, I started working for Save the Harbor right after I graduated college. I was like, oh man, I don't have anything to do for the summer. And I got connected with uh, Bruce Berman, uh, who, you know, is our director of strategy and communication. He was like, yeah, like, come on in. Like we got, we got space. And so I was a, a team leader for the summer programs. And I think I did that for like four summers. And then there was an opportunity to um, become the program director. And so I, I jumped on it because I mean, what an awesome organization and being able to spend your, your summers outside on, on the water. Like, I mean, what, what more can I ask for? <laughs> I just have really good lighting. I'm not as young as I might appear in this Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, you're, you're all young. <laughs> How did you get into the organization? Um, but yeah, I think Kristen's story is like a great demonstration. I mean, you know, we, we get so many great, young people coming through the program and, and whenever we can, we're, we're a small nonprofit. There's, there's only so many opportunities we have, but whenever we do, you know, if we can find a place here in the organization for folks and, or through our networks, um, you know, and in partnerships with, you know, the state, the national park service, other, other community organizations, there's a lot out there. Um, and, uh, you know, a big, a big challenge or a big uh, opportunity, I guess I'll say is, is, is just constantly getting that word out there and, 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 and making sure people know how to find them. Sure. How about yourself, Maya? How did you get involved? Yeah, so I um, have always been someone who is super involved in the community. So I was um, at the City of Boston Department of Youth Engagement and Employment actually um, throughout college. And then I had 
the opportunity to join Save the Harbor, and I got some great advice from um, someone at East YF who loves Save the Harbor. And um, I, unfortunately, am one of those people who has been in Boston and never really understood how to utilize the waterfront. And last year was my first time fishing, was my first time out on the island. So I was experiencing it along with the young people, which was really exciting for me. Um, so the teens there that were all nervous about being on a boat for the first time, I was right there with them. <laughs> and I was right there um, being confused about the fact that every time that I walk past the water, it's water that I can actually go in and I can actually enjoy. And there are fish that live in that water. Like that to me was kind of a foreign concept before joining Save the Harbor. So when I saw that there was an opportunity to provide resources to my community and also learn about all of these cool things that are happening, even more resources that I didn't know were here, it seemed like a perfect fit. And so to me, that to me is the is the bigger story about Save the Harbor, Save the Bay, is the educational aspect of it, is the you know reintroduction of of uh, your own community uh, to yourself. I'm, I'm exactly that you know a kid from Quincy or Boston knows nothing about Nahant or or, or Nantasket, you know, for that matter, and vice versa. Um, so uh, to expand that opportunity to learn more about the place that they live, I'm sure is 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 a key factor as well. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised how many people, even in, in South Boston or, or in Quincy or, or in, a, in a coastal community, you know, the, the harbor had such a, a longstanding reputation as, as a place you don't, you don't want to go or you don't want to go in that, you know, it's sort of now that it's really convincing people that that's really changed and, and, and sh- that's what sharing all these opportunities is about. Yeah, and of course, there's the economic side of it too. The, you know, it's it's a working harbor. Um, people make their their li- their livelihoods, you know, off off living along the uh, water. So there's that that part of it um, as well. The story to tell. Ever do any programs around that part of uh, the harbor, Kristen? I'm I'm just curious. Yeah, um, because our offices are right on the fish pier, we have a lot of um, opportunity to. Uh, really just interact with the people that are working on the fish pier. And we have uh, Massport right here too, as well. So um, th- they were a part of our speaker series a couple of years ago. And, you know, we just have that ongoing partnership with a lot of uh, people. We get, we get our, our bait right, right downstairs from, <laughs> from uh, Calamari Fisheries and, and a few other uh, places right along the, the fish pier here. So um, that's definitely a, a part of, of something that we incorporate, especially into our youth jobs program is like there are opportunities, like literally right where, we are so <laughs> yeah. yeah no absolutely do you work in collaboration with um with the state dcr at all um obviously uh, you you know do the programs that you're funding are not line items in the state budget is that right well actually I, I, if i haven't said it already and um I'll, i will say it um the better beaches program is actually a partnership with the dcr okay. um and um the money we raise the splash in most years actually join a, a state line item um, for that, that supports the, um, uh, the grant program. So mm-hmm. in most years, um, the, uh, we will grant out over $200,000, um, you know, made up of the state money and the, um, and the, the splash money um, to organizations um, to do these free programs. Um, you know, that it's all up in the air a little bit with, with the pandemic, but uh, you know, you know, we, we, we funded uh, ahead last year to, to to help people pivot during the pandemic and you know hold back some money for when they can do their events um, in person again. Um, but yeah, you know, DCR is a great partner. They manage all of the beaches uh, in the metropolitan region that we work on, um, including Wollaston Beach. And um, you know, it's, the, the partnership extends you know from the funding down into you know doing beach stewardship and cleanup days with with community groups or, or corporate groups and things like that um, all along the coast. That's great. That's good to hear. And uh, hopefully, I mean, uh, you know, the weather uh, can be nice right into uh, October around here. So uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, by then we'll be post pandemic and be able to get out and, and enjoy uh, the beaches more. Yeah, people people are going to find a way to use them, um, and we'll, you'll see people out there this summer, and people should be. And again, I, I probably can't say it enough. Just you know, be safe. You know, follow keep following the guidance until until we're through this, um, and that way we'll you know we're we're, we're so lucky in Massachusetts that we got to to have these beaches all summer long and into the fall, um, and that's we just want to keep that up. 
So again, we should recap for folks the uh, the Shamrock Splash. Uh, that's the immediate uh, uh, content of discussion here, and how that all works, and uh, how folks can contribute even if they don't want to splash. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> yeah, you can go to shamrocksplash.com and donate to Save the Harbors team. Uh, you can donate. Um, teams can raise money for specific beaches too. So you can donate to um, people who are raising money for Wallaston Beach. And I think Wallaston's uh, on track to be one of our top three beaches this year. Um, so nice job, everybody down there. <laughs> good to hear. Good to, not that it's a competition or anything, but it's good to hear. <laughs> not that it's a competition. <laughs> so, uh, Kristen, am I anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, obviously, because uh, of the pandemic, like we're so excited that we're getting so many more people uh, involved because you can literally splash from inside your house, like even if you want to. So um, we're, we're just, you know, encouraging people to register and uh, splash. Uh, again, if you don't want to splash, you can donate. Um, it's all going back into to the communities that, that we serve. So um, get involved and, and yeah, thanks for having us today. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. And you, and you, oh, you know, you can get the sweatshirt, but you can also win JetBlue tickets. So our other major sponsor, in addition to Harpoon, is JetBlue. And so, you know, biggest fundraiser. We have a costume contest. We've got a, a raffle for people who donate and people who, um, uh, I'm not sure what all the, the, the you got to go read the fine print on the website, but there's, uh, there's a number of ways to, to win, um, uh, win those prizes. And JetBlue has been a huge sponsor of the Better Beaches program, along with Harpoon, for the past decade. Ah, very nice. I remember there was the the find the marble competition one year. Is that is that something that? Yes. <laughs> yes, that that did happen uh, for a few years. Yeah, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. A little scavenger hunt. Sure. Anything else, Maya? No, just go to shamrocksplash.org and get involved. And once we have all of this great money that has been donated and contributed from the community, please reach out to us. If you are an artist, an organization, an individual with a great idea to safely bring people down to the harbor this summer, please reach out at, um, you can reach out to us at any platform, but uh, savetheharbor.org. Um, please connect with us so that we can find a way to fund your great idea to connect people to the harbor this summer. Okay, I'm guessing you're all over social media as well? Yep, at Save the Harbor on everything. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you all. Really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun, and um, I'm looking forward to, to getting out on the beach this year. Great. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Special thank you to Chris Mancini, Maya Smith, and Kristen Barry for joining us today. Thank you to our crew, and thank you for watching. On Monday, we'll welcome members of the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and talk about a new video series spotlighting three Asian-owned businesses here in Quincy. And don't forget to go to our website anytime, qatv.org. You'll find all of our latest programs, news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Please stay safe.